A while back, I picked up nine vinegar barrels on Craigslist, and these were actually legit vinegar barrels this time. You can see there's a sticker on there. It says vinegar. Uh, it doesn't say math. It's, it's different than the last time I got barrels. Anyway, before I get to chopping, let me show you the plan for this project. It is a barrel on a stand. The stand is uh, made up of two octagons, kind of like sandwiched together, and that creates some space for a light. So we are making a really awesome illuminated rain barrel. All right, so back to cutting the wood. I was chopping a 10 and a half inch sections. You're gonna need eight of them. And there's a couple ways to do it. Uh, one is just to cut them straight up square like this and then nip the ends off. You can also cut your angle and then flip the board, cut your angle, flip the board. It's kind of up to you how you wanna do it. But uh, the angle is pretty crucial. If you're making an octagon, you gotta cut 22 and a half degree angles. You just gotta do that. And if you're using a chop saw, like this or miter saw, it's already got the 22 and a half like nipped out on the uh, settings. It's just kind of predetermined. Whoever figured out octagons are made up of 22 and a half degree angles. I love that. It's like, it was like Pythagoras and his crew or something. Anyway, you cut a bunch of these guys really precisely. Again, 10 and a half inches long at the points. That way it will accommodate your barrel. These 55 gallon barrels you know, they're heavy and they need a strong support. I also pre-drilled these pieces. That's because they're gonna get screwed together. When you screw them together, use a really perfectly level surface, like machine level. Uh, in this case, I was using my backyard and you know, it worked okay, but you should do this on like a garage floor or workshop bench or something like that. It's just gonna be less hassle for you. And in no time at all, you will find that your octagon comes together. I made two of these guys. So you're gonna need two, one for the bottom and one for the top of your base. You're also gonna need some legs. And I cut mine at seven and a half inches. That gives room for the barrel to kind of come up off the ground, which makes the light illuminate a little bit higher. It also creates room for your light. And if you're using a rain barrel, if you haven't done this before, you gotta get your rain barrel up off the ground to create any kind of water pressure for your garden, unless your rain barrel is up on top of a hill or something. So this base has multiple functions. Just screw your legs into the center of your uh, octagonal sides and line the two up, screw them together. You might need to tap a little bit with a hammer just to get it lined up. But once you have it lined up, you're gonna have a really beefy base. All that load of your water is transferring from those legs down to the bottom, and it's gonna be really solid. The weight of water is no joke, man. That stuff is 8.34 pounds per gallon. So with the 55 gallon barrel, man, you're gonna have like 458 pounds. That is equivalent to 207 kilograms or 32.7 stones. You gotta just love that whole stone thing. All right, uh, you also need to prep your site. Obviously, you wanna set your barrel on flat, level, solid ground or brick or concrete or something like that. Here I was doing it on dirt and I just made sure it was nice and level before I put my base down. All right, let's talk about this light. I got this light on Amazon. There's a link down below. It's kind of cool. It's a solar powered floodlight and the, the panel is connected via a cord to the light. So you can put that panel up, you know, far from the light. Uh, when you're putting the light underneath the barrel, the trick is to get it so that the surface of the light is touching or nearly touching the barrel. You don't wanna have the light like way down below the barrel. You wanna put that light right on the barrel. It just creates a better effect, trust me. Uh, it looks really cool when the light is right on the barrel. So anyway, whatever light you use, raise it up inside your stand so that it touches the bottom of that barrel. And if you haven't used a flood like this before, a lot of them work this way. You gotta take the bracket off, screw it down, and then you can reconnect it to the light. All right, next I got my hose running with my well water to wash my barrel. 
Uh, typically with a rain barrel, you wouldn't wash it. You know, it's just a rain barrel. It's not that big a deal. But you're creating this this light. You know, you want it to have a nice ambiance and a nice glow. And it's going to be prettier if it's clean. All right, after that, I set the barrel on the stand. And I filled it to test it out with the well water. That drain you see right there is in the future going to be diverted so that the rainwater fills up my barrel and my rainwater system is intact. Right now it's uh, beginning of winter time. We don't have any rain and I'm just testing this thing out. So I've got it filled with regular water. And as evening came, I went out to sort of test the light and it has an on button on the bottom. I checked it out and it was putting out a nice glow, like a nice even glow. There is a light on my barn and that kicked on at dark and it sort of canceled out the effect a little bit just because it was so light. So I wanted to try a bigger spotlight, like a big old flood. And I pulled out this LED floodlight. I think it's like a 250 watt floodlight, like really super powerful. And I wired it up quickly and put it just under the barrel and Dang, if that thing didn't just pop, like completely blow up in terms of how much light was coming out of it. Um, I kind of prefer the gentle glow of the solar light, but if you do want like a really bright barrel or sequence of barrels, you could use any lights you want to, but one of these LED floods is just gonna just make that barrel turn into like the sun almost, like really bright and kind of beautiful. There are links to the lights down below. Thanks for checking out the video. Hit me with a comment or suggestion or question down below, and I'll see you in the next project.